played some great stuff, Adelaide United here. Casio in space. Casio! Spectacular by the Brazilian. Fantastic goal. Fantastic move. Adelaide have the three points. And again, you just knew he was going to shoot then, didn't you? But it was a work from Cristiano holding it up in the attacking half and allowing Reed to get himself forward. And then the little ball in behind was perfectly weighted. And at that moment, you just knew one touch and then the drive. He knew the angle. He did it earlier. This time, a bit further out. Equal power and equally effective. An action replay of his first effort. And Glenn Moss was just beaten by the pace. And it's a brilliant goal. Whenever you see the ball doesn't spin, it just goes down. You know someone's hit it very sweetly. G'day guys and welcome to the Purebred Reds Adelaide United Fan TV. I'm your host as always, Ellis Gelios, and we are featuring our first episode of our new segment, Red and Legends, and I'm beginning the new segment with one of Adelaide United's greatest ever players. I'm thrilled to have him on the show with me today, um, Cassio, um, one of our longest ever serving players played prior to coming to Adelaide in Brazil, North America and Paraguay. Cassio, you arrived in Adelaide in early June of 2007. It was a new country, it was a new adventure. Um, how were you first feeling about the move? Talk us through it. Uh, firstly, thanks. Thanks for having me here. Thank uh, you. Great to, to talk to you guys. Um, yeah, the first move uh, to Adelaide was, was probably I would say one of the best moves we've done. I've done as a player mm -hmm. and uh, as a family as well. Uh, to be here and play uh, for such a long time for one club, which is probably the the club that I play play the longest time, and to play nearly yeah, seven and a half years. Mm -hmm. um, I think was probably one of the one of the best choices I've done coming to Adelaide. What was um What was the point of connection? How were you brought over here? Uh, there was an agent uh, in Brazil that um, got in contact with me and knowing one of the, the directors here from the club at the time or board members, not sure, and they needed a left back and I, at the time, 2006, I was playing for, for a club in Brazil, Serie A club at the time, mm -hmm. uh, called Santa Cruz, mm -hmm. which is a big club back then. Yeah. And, uh, and I just left the club, end of contract, and then, and then I was honestly sick of the the you know politics, politics and yeah. stuff. Uh, I was without six months without wages in that club, mm. uh, without getting paid, and then in the club that I played before it was the same thing, sort of. And I, I thought that was a time to go overseas, you know, and 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 find some some new new adventure and and play. And then that offer came straight away. And then I, I'll be honest with you, I never heard about it, about Australian football. Mm. And um, it was just the beginning anyway. Mm. I think A-League started 2003, yeah? Uh, 2005. 2005, yeah. So, and uh, yeah, and then I, I thought of, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a go. Spoke to uh, Romario, spoke to a few friends of Romario yeah. as well which Romario play here. Mm -hmm. uh, for the ones that don't remember, Romario played here 2007, uh, just before I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I came. Yeah. 
and uh, remind all great things. Oh, all course, said yeah. all great things about the club, about the city, about the country, and his friends as well, because he brought uh, 10 friends, I think. Okay. Uh, he brought a lot of friends. Yeah. And, uh, and one of his friends, one of my good mates, and uh, yeah, he said all great things about it. And, and that, that I think was, uh, was one of the, the main reasons, mm -hmm. plus the, the contract to put mm -hmm. it up and, uh, and all the, the, the country, and then we've done a bit of research as well. And then, yeah, then the rest is, is history. Awesome. Um, so, I mean, talk us through your, your mindset. Like, I assume you got into Adelaide Airport. That was the first time you'd been in Australia. What were you thinking in that exact moment? Were you thinking anything could happen here? I don't even know much about Australia, let alone, like you said, Australian football and what the climate was like with football here. Were you thinking to yourself, this could be, this could be a six month thing or maybe two years you know were you feeling nervous what what was going through your mind at the time because it's a big move coming from all the way in brazil yeah yeah uh yeah that that was a big move and uh, i remember coming here with one year contract plus one option mm -hmm. so one year plus one and uh, i remember coming on a plane with, with my wife and my 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 son my older son now which is he was three at the time Donato, okay. yeah. um young family i remember telling her uh i have no idea what, what's coming but i'm sure this is my last my last option mm -hmm. if it doesn't work i'm gonna i'm gonna find someone else to do because yeah i had enough of a movie you know mm -hmm. we, with such a young family my family we moved for, for a few different countries yeah I, playing America in Paraguay, different cities in Brazil. So I just wanted to settle with the family. And, and then, yeah, then I remember my wife telling me, nah, we'll work, I think we'll work. And then I put in my hand, yeah, that, that will work. Mm -hmm. But this is my last opportunity, uh, I would say real opportunity, which I was 27 completed. And then I thought, not that young, but not too old. Mm -hmm. And then- In and your then, prime. Yeah, and then actually it was yeah. one, of, one of my, and then one of one of my best aged playing physically as well. And then I, when I came here, started to train. As soon as I put a drop in the airport, and then drive into the club, and then I was like, here we go. That's and it. And that I liked the, what I seen, and then started to train with the boys, and then yeah, and then I said that, that's it. And mm -hmm. then something that clicked, and they're like, yeah, I'm gonna stay here for a long time. And then, yeah, and then I'm still here, still living here. The rest is history. Yeah, yes. So um, when you first got here, Aurelio Vidmar spoke to the media because it, uh, it got announced just before you came that you'd been signed. No one knew a lot about you at all. And uh, Aurelio Vidmar was quizzed about the kind of player you were. These were the things he had to say. He said, Cassio is a strong left foot. He gets up and down the line, has good pace, puts in a good cross, and is very well suited to the A-League style of play. He's an exciting type of player who will attract people to the game. Uh, we've been very selective in the type of player we wanted to sign and we're looking forward to having a player of his quality here in Adelaide. Now, what I would say about that is people may or may not always agree with Aurelio Vidmar, but pretty much bang on there with what he had to say about you. Uh, in hindsight, um, the way I saw it when you first came, um, you're a new kind of defender for the club and for the league, uh, attacking modern day fullback who could overlap take free kicks, free kick specialist, um, and cross better than anyone in the club's history. I think maybe just now we're seeing with Craig Goodwin, maybe he's the only contender that, in my memory of being an Adelaide United supporter who could ever deliver a ball as well as you could in your time at the club. Um, that's just the way I saw it. Um, anyway, were these all the types of attributes that Aurelia Vinmar wanted you to showcase when you first arrived at the club? Yeah, firstly, thank you for, yeah, for your words as well. And I didn't know about that when Vili did that, yeah. when he said that. I think it was, yeah, it was spot on. Yeah. Uh, uh, you guys, uh, I mean, I'm not saying I'm the best player, mm. best left back in the world, mm. but I believe I brought some, some different and new things to the league. Mm -hmm. I, I have to say, I have to be honest, when I came here, I didn't expect uh, that full backs, uh, wasn't attacking as much mm -hmm. because I thought, well, playing in, in the first division in Brazil, second division, mm. and playing Paraguay, very good league, in MLS as well, mm. it's, it's a very good league. Yeah. Um, 
I thought, well, would have been that different. But then I realized the full back still wouldn't go as much. But it didn't change anything about my game. Yeah. So I kept playing forward, of course, not forgetting to defend, which yeah. is the main job for, for full back is first to defend. But then I kept making uh, making my runs and, and forward scoring some goals, crosses in, uh, blah, blah, blah. And uh, and I think it was something different for them, even yeah. for, for the players. Because the players sort of look at me like, is this guy crazy? Like all the time going forward. Remember like defenders next to me, like, and then after they realized that worked, yeah. like scoring goals, they have to give me a lot of assists. And then it sort of just go, man. Yeah. And then, yeah. and I remember having Valcanis, Mick Valcanis and Costanza with mm -hmm. me, sort of like, they look at me, just go, man. <laughs> and I'll quick cover you. Yeah. So, so you got free license. And then you yeah, have free license, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. And they helped me a lot as well mm. to, for me to settle. And uh, and I think, yeah, I think you, you guys uh, hit it in the head, I yeah. have to say. Um, was there a kind of system at all or anything that you spoke about with um, Allegic at the time about um, at right back, you know, if uh, if you attacked, he'd stay back a bit more or...? Yeah, this is a, a, a normal uh, normal setup, which yeah. is a shuffle. Yeah. When you're young, you learn yeah. that. When the full back goes, uh, one full back, yeah. let's say full back goes, the yeah. other one shuffle across, yeah. Yeah. and then you become a back three. Yeah. So back three plus one, mm. the, the number six. Mm -hmm. So you defend with four. Yeah. This is back then. Yeah, we talk yeah, about yeah, 10 yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah, it's changed Things changed a bit. Yeah, yeah. But mainly when the full one goes, the other one yeah. comes across and become a, a defender. Yeah, yeah. So this is natural, of mm -hmm. course, the full... Uh, uh, Allegic knows yeah. about, knew about it yeah. when he when you obviously when yeah. he went I like, tucked in as well okay. and uh, and Vidi of course he yeah. played the game good coach yeah. he, he always refreshing us but mm. didn't need to say as much but in some stage we we could go both yeah, together yeah, at the yeah, same right. time yeah. and one of the six is uh, the six is stay yeah. and become a back three when he needed results and stuff yeah. two full back goals. So I think uh, we, we had a good potential moving forward mm. um, uh, on the wings. And yeah, I think we, we scored some, some good goals uh, through the wings at the time. There you go, there you go, great stuff. Um, so your first season, uh, we didn't have a great year as a club, didn't make the finals, finished in sixth place. Uh, but it was a remarkable season for you because you won the club champion award in your first season. Um, talk us through that. Yeah, well, first and before that, I remember playing a pre-season cup uh, for, for the club and yeah, we yeah. won that, oh, that, that, yeah, yeah. that title yeah, yeah. Uh, against Perth Glory yeah. and I scored you a goal, kick, I scored, yeah. no, I scored oh, a goal okay, from outside yeah, yeah, of the yeah, box. Yeah. remember going on the right side, yeah. receiving a ball from, not sure, mm. I think it was Spags, yeah, Spagnolo, yeah, yeah. and then cut in and then, and then yeah, scored. Uh, something different as yeah. well, so full back goes in and then receives the ball. Um, after the preseason cup, uh, we I think we we got so confident about going to the the, the season, mm. which we our season started really well. Yeah, I think up to the yeah uh, probably halfway through I think we were really good. Mm -hmm. Then then we we, we let it slip uh, the last yeah mm. last yeah halfway through yeah. The season. My biggest disappointment in that year is because we had a. We've had a good team. Mm. So if you if you go through all the, the, the members and the individuals we, we had in every position, mm -hmm. it was a great team, probably one of the best ones in, in the league. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's my biggest disappointment. But about not getting further or mm -hmm. winning or getting to finals, that was a, the, the biggest disappointment for me. Uh, but but you say when you mentioned about individual, uh, yeah, one uh, this individual, yeah, uh, uh, just because it was your first season, in a new that was important, of course. That's a pretty big achievement, right? exactly. Yeah. Then I, I was happy because of that, mm. so I wasn't happy one way, mm -hmm. but I was happy on that way. Yeah. Couldn't speak uh, uh, the language, uh, English, uh, uh, as well as you do now, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, as well as I'm doing now, of yeah. course. I still still have a lot to learn, yeah, but uh, <laughs> Not wrong, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, but I was as a Personal achievement, I think, was really mm. was really good. So it was good for me. Could we have maybe um, at least sneaked into the finals that season if 
Paul Agostino was always fit because he was the number nine at the time. Um, was that maybe something that let us down a little bit in that season? Yes, I believe so. Yeah. I believe we we only had uh, we had Bruce. I think mm-hmm. Bruce Gitte up front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Bruce, we can't rely on twenty yeah, old very kid, young, yeah. very young, nineteen yeah, year old kid. Yeah. So he scored I don't yeah. know four or five goals mm. at season, and he was really good. He helped a lot. But you can't rely on kid. That's yeah. that's one of the the most important positions uh, for a football team. Yeah. He's got a job, it's to score goals. Mm. And Paul at the time, big profile, good mm. player, mm. Uh, didn't play much. Mm. And I think was when he played, he scored a few goals. Yeah, he did. But he was, uh, he was on and off mm. with injuries and stuff. And which, uh, yeah, which I think you, you, you're right. I think probably insane um, in positions, probably the position we like the most. So we could, Maybe it could go further. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Yeah, interesting to uh, to think back to that time. Um, anyway, um, during the very next season, the club achieved unprecedented success, becoming the first A League club to make it out of the Asian Champions League group stages, whilst going on to make an Asian Champions League final, the A League Grand Final, and to participate in the FIFA Club World Cup. Um, what was it like being a part of this uh, chapter in the club's history, Cassio? Oh, that, that was some of the best memories. Yeah, some yeah. of the, the. I would say I have so many good memories about about the club, about the the playing groups and the the coaches, the everything people involved in the club. But this is probably one of the most uh, yeah better ones because when you think about it, we went everywhere in Asia to yeah. play, you know, and you you spend more time with the players, with the coaching staff. Than your family, mm-hmm. so we for 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 six months doing that. We traveling for six months, uh, stay a week away, then come back, stay another few days, and you're gonna go again. So, which is uh, very proud from for for the club, proud moment for the club, and no one ever expected uh, an A League club to to achieve that. Of and course. I think we did that early. I yeah. think we did early. But if you go again, if you go through. Uh, Players, player by player, we had even better team than yeah. the year before. Yeah. My favorite team ever. So yeah. if you go through yeah. like positions, mm-hmm. we had Sasha Banovsky. Mm-hmm. So you have to give the coaches Rock the credit. Yeah. Uh, Vid- Vidmar, uh, a few stubs at the time. Mm-hmm. They signed some good players as well. Yeah. Bringing Sasha Banovsky, bringing mm-hmm. uh, top of my head. Cristiano uh, scored a few goals. Cristiano, yeah. Alemão, a yeah. uh, few boys. Uh, who else is there? Paul Reed, mm-hmm. Paul yeah, Reed, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then we we had so Scott Jamison came in. Yeah, Jamison yeah. came. Mm-hmm. That's when I started to play a bit more as a left winger. Yeah. So and then you you we look at that team like it was really good. Mm. And then yeah, and then we I think we we deserve it with Gamba. I think we probably didn't. No, uh, they're a better team in the end. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. have to oh, say. Yeah. But uh, but you know. Uh, in a final, a league final, I think we deserve a twin. Yeah, so yeah, I think we, we know all the the incident there that happened. But anyway, but we in football you can't give an excuse. Yeah. you win, you win. You don't. You got to work harder next time. I mean, um, why don't you let us in on some of the the details that people don't probably know a lot about? Like, for instance, um, I think there was a rumor going around when we had to travel to Uzbekistan for the second leg um, against Bunyod Court. Um, there was an economy flight, so you had to spend like 30 plus hours in the air, play a crucial game, then come back straight to an A-League game. Like, what was it like for a, a, you know, a modest playing group that was under a salary cap to have to compete in three different competitions, still make an A-League grand final? I mean, you know, you guys in that season well and truly played out of your skin to achieve what you did. Um, you know, what was it like just in these in-between moments that you had to, for instance, like, you know, an English Premier League club, never when they travel for a Champions League game are they going to be in, on an economy flight, you know, whereas these are the things you guys as professionals had to deal with. You know, what was that yeah, like? Yeah, well, I have to say uh, some flights we went economy, mm-hmm. but... I have to mention as well Nick Bianco. Yeah. When we we made a one or two flights, yeah. He paid all business for us. Okay. Yeah. Once, uh, yeah, once or twice, once I think. Mm-hmm. So not sure which one. He's a very generous owner. Very yeah. generous, and mm-hmm. you have to mention as well. People don't know know that 
but so he's done out of his own pocket which is yeah. very a, mm. it's a, very expensive mm. but most of the trips we've done economy class uh, mm. economy classes and for t- from australia to you know to asia to japan it's a yeah. long trip to yeah. china yeah. to uzbekistan yeah. it's, it's very long and you need you need your body to uh, to perform mm. as well um, I think it's more the main thing for me is the love you're gonna have for the game. Yeah. So when you have the love for the game, what do you do, your work doesn't mean doesn't need to be uh, football. Mm. Um, any other job you do, when you love your job, you have to do it. So, and I believe that group uh, we embrace that, and that that's it's not in our hands. Mm. We we can do it, and then that's we we kept kept pushing, kept pushing three competitions. And then we kept pushing, and we, in the end, we, we didn't get what we 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 deserve mm. in A League at mm-hmm. least. Mm-hmm. Like I said, Champions League, different story because I think Gambia was a better team in the end, both legs. But uh, but at least A League, we we, we deserve it. I, yeah. I would say. Well said. I agree with you one hundred percent. Now, just after that period of time, um, you were at the top of your form. I think. Um, Everything was going very, very well for you. One of the clearly at that point the best foreign players that had ever come into the league, and so naturally interest came about. And uh, I just want to ask you about something so you can clear it up. It uh, it was reported in the media at the time, but um, I think it was resolved and it just kind of went away and people just sort of got on with it. But um, just so you can clear it up. Um, one of the two expansion clubs that came in from Queensland, North Queensland Fury, uh, there was reported interest that they wanted to sign you as their marquee player. Um, can you quickly clear this up for us, what went, what went down? Yeah, no, I can, yeah, good question because I actually never spoke about that uh, to anyone, myself. Uh, what happened at the time, um, we know we have your six uh, six month period contract uh, out of contract when you go towards the end of your and contract. And then you can be approached by. The and clubs, then you yeah. can be approached by other clubs. So that's how how it works in 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 here. Mm-hmm. And uh, a few clubs approached me. They they send a letter to the club to Adelaide, no, uh, telling them that they they will start conversations with me or they're interested to talk to me or something. I think they have to let the club know. So. In that time, one of the agents called me, representing the club. We sort of started, we started a bit of a conversation about it. Uh, they they never actually put an offer through on mm. paper. Okay. But uh, nothing that came to my my hand. But uh, but we talk about numbers, mm-hmm. and uh, I remember I had like coming in between mm. and offer me a contract so yeah. concrete offer they call me with something like in in 24 hours we resolved and i believe adelaide took a bit of time because i think uh fury at the time north queens and fury they sort of looking for like a sort of marquee offer mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is i don't know if adelaide could uh, could cover that yeah and that's why probably Adelaide said we we're gonna lose a player because mm. sometimes you gotta you gotta measure you know like the offer the m- money with you know weigh everything up where you gotta weigh it up everything so you can you see what you do mm. uh, and then I went I went and then Adelaide came across and offered me a contract I didn't think twice I probably have done wrong because I should let them know yeah uh, I just signed it okay and then I let them know so great and then, for us. Yeah, well, it was it wasn't good in my view because yeah. it wasn't the right thing to do mm. um, because I I should have done the, the opposite way. Mm. But then it was just something like I had I wanted to stay. I didn't want to leave. Something came. Uh, maybe Adelaide could could have handled this better as well yeah, with yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah. We haven't, but it, it's okay. That's okay. Mm. And yeah, and then I signed it and then reported to the media. Adelaide uh, releasing to the media, and then it was a big deal with yeah. with, with, with North Queensland. Mm. I be, I remember the the CEO like having a go at me, which oh, is yeah. which is well. fair, like yeah, which is uh, like I said, I was was sort of my mistake as well because I should have should have spoke to them before sign mm. as I, I was in co- open conversations mm. and negotiations. You wanted to be professional. Yeah. I wanted to be professional. Yeah, but can happen. Yeah, and then I believe now I believe being here for such a long time after that and the club. Uh, after two, three years, uh, Fury, Longest, yeah. yeah, so they, 
the back rub, yeah? Yeah, uh, so yeah, 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 they, they're licensed for They're licensed for yeah. so, and then I believe I've done the right, the right choice. Of course, in so, hindsight, couldn't have worked out any better. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, well, good that we could clear that up for all Adelaide United fans. Uh, I just want to fast forward now to the 2010-11 season. Um, a lot of changes for the club. Uh, new coach, uh, Dutchman Rennie Cullen, came in. Uh, new owners eventually ended up coming in a few months after that. We got, um, for the first time, and probably the first time since then, um, a, a dominant number nine that could score goals. Um, uh, a really exciting number 10 as well, Marcos Flores from, from Argentina. Um, and for you, it was also <coughs> another outstanding season as you played 36 games um, and 2,985 minutes across all competitions. Gradually going on to win your second club champion award, which is a phenomenal effort. Um, discuss this with us, Cassio. What was it like this season and, and your achievement? Yeah, the Personal season for me, this was my best one. Yeah. The, this season, uh, we didn't play as a team that good as we, as we played in 2009. Yeah. Right? That year that we went through, that we just discussed. Yeah. Uh, but my personal one for me was my best one since mm -hmm. I've been here. Uh, that year I played, I won the PFA team of the season. Uh, yeah, so few play of the year here. Uh, Full back, yeah, left full back of the of the of the the season as well, mm -hmm. and I believe we had a great team as well. Uh, we finished third. I think we lost to Gold Coast in the semi final. Yeah. Home. Do you take that was us a, out? Bruce knocked us out. Yeah. Yes, uh, I, yeah. I, it was really it was really disappointing because we we had everything in our hands mm. and we we made a few mistakes and then we we just conceded last. Yeah, last few minutes of the game, and then we 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 out. And if we win that game, I believe we we're going through the the major semi final. Mm. We're very confident. We're well. mm. a good team. Mm. I remember having uh, playing with players like very good players. Matthew mm. Lecky mm. just started. Yeah, uh, Marcus Flores probably best number ten. Yeah, uh, I would say the play uh, here for the club. Um, Sergio Van Dijk, you know, mm. best number nine. So we had in positions again. I well, remember myself, Flores, and, and Van Dijk. We made the team of the season this year. Yeah. We personally had it. We, us three, we had a we had a great season. Mm. And Matthew Lackey, and then you go through Travis Dodd, mm. Lucas Pantelis. Yeah. We had such a good 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 team that year. Paul Reed was amazing. Uh, Paul Reed, Reed we had a yeah. very good team. Yeah. And we really cool and coming. Mm. Uh, he opens up a bit of uh, different ideas about okay. it. Yeah. Uh, I was lucky, the video was a very good coach at the mm. time, with Stubbsy as well, yeah. assisting him. And then Rini came, Rini, Rini gave me, he probably, as a Dutch, mm. Dutch man, he's, he saw what I could give more for the team. Yeah. He gave me a lot of freedom, always, okay. always yeah, freedom. Yeah. He tell me, don't forget when you, when, we, when you don't have the ball, what you have to do as a defender to... Mm to win the ball and, and, and help a team. When you win the ball, mate, just play. Mm. Play your game. Yeah, yeah. That's what you used to tell me. So I believe when you said that, I was like, oh, here we go. Yeah. Remind me when I was a kid back home. Okay. Just going, yeah. taking players on all the yeah. time and, wow. you know, one, twos and scoring goals, mm. these things. And these sometimes players need to hear that from coaches yeah. so he can give you confidence. When he's done that from the beginning of the preseason and then opens up everything. But it was a great year mm. and 
Um, Unfortunately, yeah, we didn't we didn't get to to the final. We I mean, we close. A lot of things happened that season. Obviously, you know, we would both agree that the club underachieved given the team we had. But um, for instance, like you know, the the seven one win against North Queensland, the fact that. Uh, Matthew Leckie was just breaking out. I think his his first game might have been against North Queensland. North Queensland, well. yeah. two nil. We won. Yeah, 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 I remember. Yeah. I remember watching that one. Yeah. And um, the other thing was, and importantly for you as well, um, we had really been getting bossed around by Melbourne Victory for a couple of years. We go to Amy Park. Why, why don't you just tell it from your from your uh, perspective? One of the greatest games in our history. Yeah, it's probably yeah one of the great, greatest games I, I, I've been involved here, mm. uh, especially because of that that reason. Mm. Uh, it was very Melbourne Melbourne victory had been giving us a very hard time yeah. playing home, even home and away, yeah. um, and we went there with our team very you know, very confident. Mm. We beat them four one, but we actually could score more goals. Yeah, as far as I remember, yeah. we could have beaten them six or seven, mm. and. Uh, playing good football, you know, um, all across the park, and I think from that game, I think everything changes. I think uh, they didn't after they won the the final, like six nil. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think they won the final. In two thousand seven. I wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. here. I just yeah. came yeah. here yeah. after. Yeah. Yeah. I think after that they probably thought, "Oh, we're gonna beat these guys." Yeah. And if one or not, you keep uh, Adelaide boys always keep that in mind. Mm. The players yeah. when you go and play. But uh, and then then the victory players as well. We go and play Adelaide. Yeah, let's go, let's go. And it sort of kept that for two, three years. Mm. And then after we, yeah, we beat them over there. We beat them four one home as well. Two thousand seven eight season. Not yeah, sure if yeah. you remember. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah, we, yeah. Uh, uh, one of the earlier rounds. Yeah, one earlier rounds. Yeah. We had heaps of players out. And yes. Had tell us score yes. That's it. That's it. Yeah. So you remember? Well, that was but, uh, since, since the 2011 game in Melbourne. Was, yes. We'd never seen any. After that game, game the yeah. 2007 eight. Yeah. I don't think we won any game yeah. until that game. And of course, you participated in the 2009 Grand Final against Melbourne in the one 0 loss. I remember the old. Uh, we gave one of those. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was so. So. So you had a lot of um, you know not bad blood, but um, as far as it goes with really 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 despising a certain rivalry in football you know that's what the victory were to you on a personal yeah. level because you've had so many experiences of being second best against them so that day to win 4-1 in melbourne must have just been like a weight off the shoulders yes yeah, true yeah. yeah i remember going to the change of everyone said there we, we go we've done it and then after that i think we had a few more a few more good wins mm-hmm. about it yeah, take the monkey out of the show. That's how you that's say. The one, yeah. yeah, we yeah. did it. So and then yeah, after that things got better in our way against them. And even nowadays, you see Adelaide beating them. It's very even now. Mm. So sort of, I think we yeah we we created that. And saying about my yeah. my gesture, you gave it to them. Yeah, to the, yeah. <laughs> I actually I gave it to them. That's yeah. pretty much yeah. it. Yeah. I was angry. You know, we they would have been giving it to you as well. The they fans, they so. actually yeah. yeah. You know, when things like when you yeah. I shouldn't have done it. Yeah, I had to respect the yeah. the, the the supporters as yeah. well. The opposition supporters always. I always did. I always do. But at the time, you know, angry. Uh, you know, um, red card mm. off the field, and then yeah, just. Things that came and then, yeah. But anyway, so yeah. I think they helped to to create that uh, yeah that spice in between. Or just swagger uh, back. Huh? Yeah, which yeah. with with Cosmina and Musket as well back yeah. then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these th- these things created to mm. the spice in between both teams, which is as long as they're healthy, it's good. Exactly right, mate. Beautiful. Uh, welcome to this special day here at Highmarsh Stadium. Just want to welcome a uh, new addition to the family of Adelaide United and the Australian community, Cassie Oliveira. Got his Australian citizenship today with his uh, wife Juliana and his two kids. Congratulations, Cassio. Thanks, thanks, Gemma. Um, we just want to just want to take you through so, a couple of things. Um, since you've been five and a half years in Australia, yeah. What have you What have you taken on board of the Australian culture? Uh, Vegemite, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, meat pie, and some nice tackles when you play. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very good. Aaron, anybody got anything to add? Want to say anything? Um, have you picked up our lingo? Anything like, how's it going, mate? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I'm learning with you guys. Uh, good day, mate. Uh, how's it going, mate? <laughs> 
<laughs> my accent's terrible, but uh, accent. I'm gonna pick. Bring that up and tell us. I'll pick it up slowly. Do you know what this big fella here is? Of course I know. What is it? Kangaroo. Yeah, but in in Australia we say it's a kanga. Kanga. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, I just have to call it kanga. This is Skippy. Kanga. Skippy the bush kangaroo. Kanga. <laughs> kanga. That's good. It's good to know. I didn't know that. See, five and a half years. <laughs> now he's learned something new. That'll do. Just want to once again welcome Cassio to become an Australian citizen um, and for him and his family and hope they enjoy the rest of their time here and they will. Thanks boys, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. So the accolades continue to fall your way as you were granted Australian citizenship on the 7th of September in 2012. Now on that day you said the following, I'm so proud. This is a real special moment for me and my family. I remember the first time I stepped into this country and especially into Adelaide in 2007. I remember telling my wife that I had really good feelings about coming to Australia and hopefully we stay here for more than one year. We've been here for five and a half years and it has been hard staying away from our families back in Brazil. But I've found new friends and new family here and that makes me feel so good and I'm very proud at this moment. Um, now, did you ever envisage that you would stay in Adelaide long enough to become an Australian citizen? And how joyous of an occasion was this for you and your wife, Juliana? Not at all. I, no? I never I never thought about yeah. becoming a citizen, coming here, stay that long time and become an uh, Australian citizen and live here now, which is my, yeah, uh, where we live. Mm -hmm. People should stay home now. Um, uh, year by year, I always lived year by year, playing, you know, playing, so started. After we, when the club approached me about becoming a, a citizen, which mm -hmm. was 2012, yeah. after I think I had five and a half years here, um, I think the club wanted to sign a few other, few other visa players. Yeah. So it was, it was, uh, it was good for the club as well, the interest to sign other players, and then I was entitled to, to do it. Mm -hmm. So, and then, yeah, and then that, that thing yeah, really, really interested me as well. Because something Australia is very, it's a very good, uh, it's a very good country to live and mm -hmm. for families. I had my my second boy, second baby, yeah. um, uh, there, which is my uh, Enrique is nine, ten years old now. See how yeah, how, time, yeah, flies. time flies. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I thought yeah, there, I'm, I'm happy. I took that offer, and then the club look after everything about about the the citizenship stuff. We just had me and Juliana, my wife. We had to do the test and everything, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is. Easy enough? Very hard. Hard? Actually. Oh, wow, okay. Very hard. Yeah. The, we done the, the English test, which yeah. is IELTS. Mm -hmm. We had to do it, so we both passed. Uh, but it wasn't, wasn't very easy, which people probably think about it. Gee. Um, the Australian, um, the, he, about history, Australian mm -hmm. history, mm -hmm. was the, for me, that was the easiest one. Yeah, we, okay. We done a lot of research yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And we, and I think you're probably going to get 90% of that or something, okay. yeah. so but it was good. It wasn't that easy as I thought, but, but it was good. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me personally, it was good as well because it's more you get into that and then you get to know about it, about the country, and then you got interest to know. And then after that, myself and my wife, we started to read a lot more about everything, mm -hmm. about all the cities. So we started to travel a lot more to know the places and we know a lot of places in, in Australia now, which mm -hmm. we love it. And yeah, it was a really proud moment for us. Yeah. And I believe we we done the, the right choice. Of course. And I had to thank the club, uh, United at the time, uh, the, the the owners there, uh, that, that was there, that uh, that uh, we really couldn't, that which supported me so, okay. on that on that uh, on that situation, which is I don't know if people know as well that one of the reasons I've done that as well was to potentially play for the national team. I was about to ask you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, there was, Holger Ziek was the national team manager at the time. Um, as soon as you got your citizenship, there was instant talk about the fact that, which was true at the time, we didn't have many options at left back. Um, you would have been 31 at the time? 30, 31, yeah. I, was a good, I was a good, yeah. good form. Yeah, yeah. yeah it wasn't. So uh, was your main focus, obviously, playing your best at Adelaide, raising a young family, um, and, and doing those things as best as you could, or did this possibility excite you from the beginning? When that conversation started, exactly from that point, when, when, they, when the club with the coach, we really uh, called me in the office to talk through about it, and then 
they they ask me this thing. The national team coach is mm. interested. He's looking at you if you potentially got the the citizenship. Yeah. And then you know, and then that's when the other thing that helped a lot to 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 gain the citizenship. Um, so, and then I had a brief chat with with Holger as well at the time. He was, yeah. uh, was like, so, and then I I knew it, that was 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 true. Yeah, well, it was real. Yeah. And then and that then I got excited. So what happened uh, when I've got it? Um, I actually don't know what happened to be honest. Mm. I've got the citizenship. Took a while to go. I think I I was 32 at the time, but then I think after that he just left it or something. Okay. And then don't know how long it took it. Yeah. But I yeah. And then I never I never got called. And then uh -huh. yeah was but that's okay. Yeah. That wasn't the main reason for mm. me to get the citizenship. Mm -hmm. But then really and I was playing I was playing very very good like yeah. I said that season 2012 season as well and 13 I, I mm. kept playing mm. I kept playing well and uh, but but yeah I don't think you know maybe age thing or Who which knows? is fine fair yeah. enough as a coach you, you need to measure all these things you know 31 32 mm. year old player will give you just a you know yeah, a just, flash, yeah. just a flash yeah. and better invest into mm. the young boys we can give you a long term term thing so I'm not sure what, what, what went through their, their mind at the time yeah if you if you remember back to that time as well um, we had a very very old national squad and yes. he was probably under a bit of pressure to regenerate true, true. so maybe that came into it yeah I don't really know the reason but mm. might might be one of the reasons yeah, yeah because he, he was the one that approached me with it with yeah, Rini yeah. which is more really in contact with him mm -hmm. and representing him about it and then yeah, yeah so but that's okay like i said yeah. would be great for mm. me for my 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 cv yeah but it's nothing that i i aim for i never dreamed about yeah, it yeah, yeah. but it would be a bonus for my career yeah no, brilliant stuff um so then we get into the 2013-14 season uh the club once again went under underwent widespread changes um adopting a new spanish possession based playing style it was also to be your last full season at the club and you were the vice captain at the time as well. Um, are you able to reflect on how you felt about the club's direction during this time? Bit of a strange time. Yeah, it was. That, that's when everything uh, started to change for me mm -hmm. we, in the club. Mm -hmm. So all those six year period that I had, great period, ups and downs with, you know. Um, More ups and downs probably. Yes, yeah, yeah well, definitely. Yeah. Every, Every aspect of your life, you have ups and downs. Mm. So in, in families, with, with, your, with your kids, with your wife, with your work, everywhere. Uh, so in my job wasn't different in, in uh, playing. So, but I, I, I'm happy to say there was a lot more ups and downs. Mm. And with this situation, when Gombao came mm -hmm. uh, with his assistant coach mm -hmm. to when he was in charge, uh, I think it was a period that changed it as well for for the club which yeah. is a great thing for the club mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll have to say because he changed the the philosophy of the club in terms mm -hmm. of playing mm -hmm. uh, which is you have to be very you know very have to have courage to do that because you, you you come here you say oh this is this is crap yeah let's move into what i believe mm -hmm. uh we can't forget that we had the really cool which is a Dutch guy who was, was a good coach. Mm. He took us through some good moments. Mm. Vidi was a great coach. Mm -hmm. Kazi was a good coach. Yeah, yeah. Kazi won the premiership here. Yeah, yeah. So and uh, and took us to took the club uh, so so far in other yeah. in other years as yeah, well. Yeah. And when Combal came, he tried to change all these into this possession base, which I believe uh when you don't have the place to do won't work okay so i have my own personal opinion on that mm. uh, about all these possession the ball possession team uh, uh have the ball and uh you can't lose the ball this is i have my own personal opinion which you we don't know if you want to know or, no 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 go yeah. into it please tell yeah. us tell us yeah uh, my opinion is to have possession of the ball for the sake of to have possession, it's no point. Okay. I'd rather play direct football. Yep. So that was my main concern with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we had videos and playing friendly games and, and games, and I put my opinions about it, mm -hmm. like, about that. For example, some games, he was happy, Gomba was happy to, to nothing to do, just make it clear here. 
I have nothing against the guy. Yeah. It's something professional that, yeah, professional yeah. that happened. Yeah. And he was a good coach. He mm. brought some good stuff to the club, mm. like I said in the beginning. Uh, it was mainly my... Uh, my co it was a conflict of ideas yeah because i was 33 at the time i went through so many things in my in my career mm. and seeing football which uh, he didn't have that experience with with football in coaching mm. really and he used to coach i think uh, kids at yeah. uh, barcelona yeah. youth yeah. academy yeah, exactly. which is a two yeah. different things of course and, and and we'll get into all all the sort of um falling out of you and the club in the next question but i just wanted to quickly touch on a bit I think what defined you as a player is that you're a winner, okay? Now, when Gombao came in in his first season, I think he gave off the impression to everyone that he really didn't care in that year about what the results were. He's, he had his head down, he wanted to try to get us playing out from the back, even though we had probably, you know, maybe centre-halves that weren't completely capable. I'm not, not trying to say anything bad about anyone, but, um, you know, like you said, I agree with you. In terms of the overall balance in the squad, it would have been very hard in an A-League season to get that kind of team going from where they were, having had a, a bit of a bummer of a year the season before, to now playing this completely new style, right? And the fact that he had his head down, he, he, you know, he ignored questions about, oh, you know, why isn't the team winning, blah, 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 all these things. That must have... That must have created a bit of uncertainty in your mind about what was happening here because, because you'd always been someone that wanted to win with this club. It was all about keeping the fans happy, playing your best and achieving success on the field, which, you know, results determines more than anything, right? So um, this must have created a bit of, you know, an air of doubt in your mind when this was going on. Yeah, very good point. Um... We had so many discussions, uh, internal discussions within players and, and coaching staff, especially with, I would say, myself. Mm. Because we had some senior boys as well, but some senior uh, boys said something, some not, but nothing like, I, I, I'd rather go straight into the point. Yeah. And for example, when he came up with these things about win is not important, that for me was a was very hard to take it mm. because uh, I was 33, like I mentioned, I was 33 at the time. Mm. If a coach comes in and say, win is not important, what is that about? Mm. What, of course, the, uh, development is important. Like uh, I think at the time, uh, this boy's coming through, Ewa Mabu, mm. excellent, great yeah. kid. Yeah. And he, I have to say, he helped him a lot. Okay. Uh, Jordan Elsie, yeah. uh, Paul Weasel, all yeah. these guys, I saw these guys coming through the youth system and you, you could see they would become what they are now. Mm -hmm. You know, Jordan, yeah. Izzo, Mabiru. They're all doing good things. Uh, they're all doing good yeah. things, good players, mm -hmm. good characters, good guys. And he helped. Mm -hmm. But you can never say that when you go into a club, professional mm -hmm. club football. I agree, 100%. Because you go, what, what do supporters think? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What the players think. Mm. You have to think about it. The players got contract. They got families. If they don't win, uh, they yeah. he'll be the first one or the coach. We're going to sack them because they didn't perform. They didn't win. Mm. So we sort of didn't, I didn't take that. And then I couldn't process that situation mm. because of that. So I, I come down. So how can I, how can I hear from you? Win is not important, that's something that we discussed, and I've saying that to him in front of everyone. Win is not important, and, and you want me to perform 100%, like, mm. it it's, does, doesn't click. And anyway, and then, yeah, and then he kept going, you know, I think the first season wasn't that good. Yeah, we, and then, uh, we just made the finals. Just yes. made the finals. Uh, Went out the first week. Yeah, and then you can see, like, from the year before, the previous year, which is Kozzi was there, mm. and then I think Mikel Valkanis took over. Interim, yeah. We finished third or fourth, yeah. and we're playing great football. And we, I think we, if I'm not wrong, I think we're first up to the halfway, uh, halfway through the season. Mm. And then after we start falling a bit, form, physically, blah, blah, blah. And then I think when Kozzi left, yeah, there was but, a bit and then you think, well, hang on, Kozzi's an Australian coach. Mm. You know what I mean? It's yeah, we're, we're still playing fantastic football. That first so, season, and so. then you can't come from, from overseas just because you work for, for whatever. And then, nah, this is all wrong. Mm. This is right. There, there we go. So, and then, like I said, my old ball possession theory, mm. my mind, is 
don't get me wrong, when you play football, you need the ball to score goals. If yeah. you don't have the ball, you can't score goals. Yeah. But you've got to be effective. Yeah. So in some games, we had 70% possession, we lost 1-0, 2-0. Mm. Mm. So remember playing, or when you played against uh, Graham Arnold? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He laughed. He, yeah. I think he loved to play against us. Really? It's my coach, just yeah. sit back a little bit, wait for the, for the ball mistake, boom, then he played through. So you don't, it, it, it's something that, that I, something that I picked up. Mm. And then I think from that, he probably saw with me, that wouldn't be easy. And then they say, yeah. Two, two points to take out from that. First, I mean, there's two ways you can look at it, right? So you can look at it from the fact that this was always gonna be a big long-term plan. And in the end, you could argue it came to fruition because in 2015, 16, the team won uh, the championship and the premiership and playing good football. It took time, but it worked. The other end of the spectrum is that you're now coming into this club. No one knows who you are, and you're playing with with the livelihood of players, um, because because your professional security depends on performance. And if you're not getting results, that that creates stress because you go home and you think, oh, you know, this isn't looking good, not only in Adelaide, but other clubs that might be interested, you know, I'm in a losing team, there's a negative, yeah. you know, yeah. flow about things, um, you know, so that's the other side of the spectrum. So I completely, if, if people are saying, oh, well, Cassio's saying all this stuff and he's just, um, you know, he's salty about the fact that Yossip wasn't picking him, blah, 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 well, you've got to, under, you've got to be in the mind of a player to actually, yeah. To that, actually understand what you're trying that to That is a good thing because from. when you play, that's the good thing. That's, I believe, as well, when the coach that play the game yeah. makes a difference. Mm. So, I, for example, all the things as well, uh, when you, I'm not, I'm not really uh, uh, good to clear up because mm. I'm not, I'm not grumpy. This yeah, is like, yeah, yeah. this is an, an angry with anything, mm. not even with him, mm. because I never spoken to him since. Mm. But uh, I don't want to, anyways. Yeah. But uh, just people know a bit about it, mm. because I never spoke about that. Mm. And uh, he, as a, as a young coach, he just used to coach young players yeah. and stuff. It's two different things about development mm. and, and and winning. Mm. Uh, it's, I think it was more worried about develop the kids than mm -hmm. the, the, the players than win trophies. Mm -hmm. So you got to, in that situation, if you have a young squad, which you had both, it was a mix up, you got to mix it up both. Yeah, and yeah. then you got to work together. I remember at the time I had a few injuries as well mm -hmm. and uh, went to him and said, look, I, I, for me it's hard because we, we, we really cool. I was already 31, 32, we caused it. They used to rest me once, uh, mm -hmm. once Here a week. There, yeah. Here and there, just do a bit of, so I can recover the next mm -hmm. training. So go. That's why 2012. These two years, I had no major injury, injuries yeah. at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he turns into everyone and said, everyone's got to, If you don't train, you don't play. Okay. So and then you know a few things which is. I had to adapt myself into of that. Of course. So yeah. because he's the boss, you yeah. have to respect the boss. Mm. So I can't, and then I, I, I try to do, as soon as I've done that, I had grade two quad tier. Mm. So try to do the best so I, can, I could impress the couple, coach. Yeah. And then I bang it. And then he felt bad. He actually yeah. called me, he texted me saying, Cassie, yeah, I probably should have heard you, blah, blah, blah. But I was too late. Then I took three months to come back and then, and then everything started, but I agree. And then I believe what he, he, like I said in the beginning, what you mentioned about it, what he created here when he came with his philosophy was great. Yeah. Like I said, I still take some good things about what he, mm. what he, he brought in here. Yeah. It's mainly the management wasn't that good. And that's, that's one criticism that I've heard from a few people was that good coach in the traditional sense, but not a good man manager in some ways yeah well not, maybe now he might be better mm. but with me for example mm. which is uh, he had to manage my mm. situation a little bit better mm. and yeah he didn't and yeah but anyways like i said but yeah. it, it's it's in the past mm. but good to clear up and i believe when the club won the the premiership 2015 16 yeah, yeah? so i'm all to cover yeah. yeah so and then you see the difference i'm mm. all play the game, the high level, yeah. 
Uh, you can see the way he. he so you acts. think he changed a few things? I think yeah. he changed everything. I, in my view. Yeah. Because he he's not there. He. That's when I said the difference between the coaches that play in a good level and the ones that didn't and mm. they're not in a good level, didn't play the game. These guys didn't know what to tell the player. Mm. So I remember more when he came as a director. He came straight. He saw my situation. Yeah, yeah. He came to me, grabbed me, and said. Cassie, whatever you need, you can you can call me, whatever. Wow. So yeah, you mm. see the guy just one mm. week here, he yeah. called me for that. That's fascinating because a lot of people, you know, Amor had such a quiet personality. In front of the cameras, he never did outlandish things or, you know, he was never animated. So people have this idea that, um, you know, he was very, very um, reactive towards everything. But you're, you're saying now that he was completely pro. I was, I was, I have to be honest, that was my only contact with, that I had with him because yeah. I, that's the only time we, apart from the, you know, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, the normal, sessions, yeah, the, yeah. the sessions, the, the mm -hmm. uh, normal stuff, mm. he, that's the only time he came to me because he knew I was in a situation wasn't the best and uh, not because I wasn't playing as well, because I wasn't playing because uh, the coach's option, which is one, and second, the um, uh, Gombau's plan in the beginning was to play me a bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's when we we had a conversation. He asked me how many games I could, I thought I could play uh, mm. this season for my because of my age, injuries, blah blah blah. He had a good intention with me, of course. But just because of the conflict of ideas w w didn't work, mm. and I'm more like he saw that. See, I I'm, I know what this guy is going through because I play mm. going through. I will help him, and then I I, I, didn't, I didn't end up uh, having coffee or talking to him. But he only the fact that he tried to help me mm. uh, in a situation he sees day by day. Yeah, for me he's got my respect, and then and there you then, go. that's it. And well, it's good to hear that. Yeah. Um, so we arrive in 2014-15. Um, sadly, this was when we ended up seeing you part ways with Adelaide United. Um, we just won the FA Cup. Um, clearly and obviously there was a falling out between you and Yossel Kumbau. It became public. Um, Tuesday, December the 23rd um, is when it was all over for you officially um, in an Adelaide United kit. You know, I just want to ask you, you know, a difficult time for you personally, probably the hardest time you'd had in South Australia. Um, you know, what was going through your head when this happened? Uh... Yeah, it was, it was very difficult, I have to say. Uh, of, I knew that that was coming. Mm. I knew that was coming. That was coming. Yeah. And um, in that game with the with the FFA final was just uh, the final. So for them, for not for the club, I'm saying for for the coach because let's you saying gonna take the coach out, but when he represented uh, the club in situation with me, he, he did represent. And um, I, I couldn't play. I mm. couldn't even train much with with the with the group. Mm. So um, it was hard for me to do, you know, to do anything. And I wasn't really part of the group. Don't know the reason. But uh, then when that happened, when the when the final, I was in the final. And then halfway through, I remember half time. Sorry, half time. Uh, I wasn't feeling well, yeah. and my head was very was spinning, and then I was I was big headache, mm. and then I came back home half time, yeah. and uh, I was home, and then I went back home. I just I remember laying laying down in my bed and watching the game, like low, uh, the volume was was very low, mm. just just seeing the, and then just to see the results. If Adler wins, it'll be good, blah blah blah, and then I didn't even think that if we win the championship. Uh, they would uh, at the time. I didn't didn't came across the presentation. my mind. presentation. Mm. So the trophies and medals every player got. That's what I think was the, the the worst thing, because when they called my name, my number wasn't there. Yeah. And then I was like, ah, I look at my wife. Like, oh my god, what what about now? Anyway. And you didn't you didn't tell anyone that you were going. I leave. didn't tell anyone. I just went back home. I just left. Yeah, then, obviously you just you know you were distorted thinking I'll know? just yeah I'll just like yeah something that you do yeah, and then yeah, you yeah. don't think sometimes yeah. and but uh but it wasn't because my it was because of my I was really my head was really exploding mm. yeah and then I actually got the report as well mm. or the medical report blah 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 after the, the day after mm. and that's when everything falls falls out the club 
uh, approached me and then I'll, I'll say um, we, we end up uh, in, a, in an agreement uh, leaving which is which is okay I'd say because I, I, I don't I, I'll be honest I, I don't want to I don't want to say anything about the club how can I say anything about the club uh, because they they're the club that opened the door for me yeah. to this country mm -hmm. you know what I mean I became a citizen. My, I got two kids that were born here in Adelaide. Uh, I made friends, lifetime friends. Uh, you know, my wife's got a job now here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We speak, you know, my kids speak English. Yeah. Like they, they, they go to school. We, we, you know, we learn all the other things. I, I, can't, I, I don't even think, how can I go and talk bad about it? Yeah. They made them, probably if they made it or not, the mistake about, about not, not giving me the right to the right acknowledge about it, what I've done. But like I said, I think it was be, not because of the club, it was yeah. because of people behind uh, was holding that to happen, which is not the club. I'll, I'm never going to talk bad about it at United because of, because of the, those things. Ama amazing honesty. Um, so I just want to ask quickly, um, during this time you'd left the club, uh, immediately after you left there was um, a bit of uh, rumours going around that you were wanted in the NPL to play um, in the in the in the, um, the top tier of the local competition in South Australia. Um, this didn't appeal to you, obviously. Uh, nah. Well, when I remember when I finished with United, and then I yeah, so I was in the media, was released in the media, and then the day after, like, I had two, three yeah, coaches and directors from NPL club here. Yeah even in Victoria as well, New South Wales uh, and one A-League club uh, mm -hmm. contacted me uh, but... Uh, you know yeah. who tell us who that was? Uh, yeah. yeah, I was Newcastle Jets yeah. okay. but a few, 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 few stubs he was there at the time yeah. he wasn't actually an offer, a yeah. concrete offer just interest? he just interest, mm -hmm. he wanted to know if what I wanted if I expected to come and maybe blah 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 but it didn't, didn't work because for a few That's other same. things as well and uh, I actually could have played one more year, maybe two. Mm. I, I think physically, with good managing, good coaching managers, uh, with medical staff, physios helping me out, I could could have played another one or two years. Mm. But uh, but I did, just didn't want to do it. Yeah. Just you know, if, if you think your time is yeah, time's up, that's when I thought about. It. I was 34 to 35, and I thought it's yeah, my time's up here, and. I think uh, with NPL clubs, uh, that commitment again, mm. four times a week, mm. plus plus game, and you know didn't get pay, you don't get paid enough. Yeah. Of and then I was looking to go to start something which I did start and I'm going now through and get get a job so I could go in long term. Mm -hmm. So playing for, for NPL clubs, you play another year or two, which is nothing that I wanted, and the, the level as well. Uh, didn't attract me as yeah, well. The level, yeah. the technical level yeah. side of the of the competition mm -hmm. as well. I have to say, I not saying enough. that I'm, not saying that I'm better than anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you have to enjoy yourself. If you're a professional your whole life, exactly. To you take have, that step down. Is, yeah, it, you have to yeah, enjoy yourself, yeah, yeah. and you have to have your mindset ready for that. Mm -hmm. I wasn't ready for that. You know, like, have that commitment. And uh, but I I thank all the guys that that. that Came, you know, to you, yeah. came to me yeah. and here interstate uh, but I, I spoke to all of them I was honest about it my my thinking and then I and then I refused all to start my my business which is I'm, I'm doing now um, just want to quickly shout out to the Red Army because um, this was the end of your playing career officially and and they were the ones that actually gave you the, the best send-off a proper send-off Yeah, that? well, I, I, of course I remember they they approached me when I when I when I finished with United and then they they done they done a good send off mm -hmm. even in the game yeah. I wasn't there. The tifo, yeah. yeah, the game yeah, after yeah. I was in Gold Coast yeah. with my family mm -hmm. because my my sister was here from Germany yeah. and we we done a good family trip mm -hmm. there just you know get ahead. That was an emotional tifo. Yeah, just I get a week out of you know, at beer. It was very it was it was mm -hmm. yeah crazy mm -hmm. crazy week and then it was the best thing I've done. But then people sending me photos about it, so the Red Army, yeah. the supporters done that. 
Uh, and I really thank the Red, the Red Army uh, supporters and Adelaide United supporters. If I could leave a message here for, for the supporters, um, just say that you guys are always amazing with me. Uh, from day one to the last day, maybe on a, when I left, I was a bit of, uh, you know, some people probably thought, oh, these guys, you know, he's, he's not into that, that mood because mm. uh, he's angry, he's not happy with with this, with that, it's not, it was never that, it was mainly just purely because of professional uh, uh, reasons that can happen in any work, uh, which happened with, with, with the coach, and like you mentioned before, it can happen to any other coach and, mm. and, and player, it's normal in life, um, and uh, I, I leave my message to, to you guys about how important you guys were and still still are for, for, my, for my staying here, mm. I would say. Um, despite all of this, uh, did it cross your mind to, to leave, to just get out, go back home to Brazil? We thought about it. We actually planning to go after my last year, uh, my last year of contract, mm -hmm. which would be go back for, for one year or yeah. one and a half, just to, to reassess. Get your yeah. assess and yeah. I've been away from home uh, at the time, I was away playing playing overseas for 10, 11 years mm -hmm. uh, in Adelaide, in Australia, plus America, uh, Paraguay, so all combined, I would say mm -hmm. 11 years. Now it's a lot more. But, and we thought about, me and my wife thought about going back to give kids another opportunity to stay uh, closer to the family, mm -hmm. my parents, my wife's parents and cousins and, and, and uncles and stuff. And uh, uh, different life perspective, uh, of schools and mm -hmm. different language, their language, but as they don't practice much here, which yeah. is just we just speak Portuguese at home. We try to to keep them going, but they you know naturally go back into English, of course, which is which is great. Yeah, but they have to keep that. We try to keep that, but it didn't work. We end up staying here. So because of the work, uh, my academy, which had opened up straight away. So and then yeah, yeah. We end up staying. And we'll, we'll get into that very soon. As Adelaide United's historic finals clash at the Adelaide Oval gives the game a local lift, the sport is also challenging AFL in our schoolyards. Some of Adelaide's top schools are employing a lineup of big name coaches. Yellow, yellow, let's go, let's go. And recently retired fan favourite Cassio has been snapped up by Pembroke. Not just our players, but also our other coaches too, so it's been a great asset for us. For Cassio, offers to continue his playing career were overshadowed by his desire to coach and he has no regrets. I always want to do that and now I'm, I'm really happy to put, a, to put it back uh, to the community now and help them. The boys and I feel like it's a great privilege to play with one of our heroes because Cassio's a superstar. He was just put in the team of the decade and we all know that and it's just great to have him around. One or two boys that could really go all the way. So that's why I'm here and, and really trying to help them maybe make it. So early 2015 was a new dawn for you. It's when you first entered into the coaching pathways at a youth level when you arrived at Pembroke School to assist in the senior Open 18 setup as well as at a private academy. What was it like for you to step onto the pitch as a coach for the first time, Cass Hill? Uh, that was good. Yeah. That was something that I always wanted to do, but uh, I never wanted to coach seniors. Mm -hmm. I just want to coach kids. Uh, that, was, that, was my, that was my dream when I, when I was playing light here for United. I always opened up my, my own academy, which is something that all this discussion that we had through the conversation about, you know, possession mm -hmm. and the technique and mm -hmm. fundamentals and foundation of the game, uh, I, can, I could put through myself yeah. teaching, which is that's what I, that's I think is a lacking of in this place. Yeah, okay. Uh, a lot to mm -hmm. the foundation of football, which mm -hmm. the kids, they don't have it here. And they still don't get it mm -hmm. because the coaching, the level of coaching is not, is not there yet to do that. So I, op I thought about opening up and then I did open up. Um, and then, yeah, then I've been running through for nearly four years now. Yeah. So I have a good number of kids. My coaches are very, very good coaches. I work with Ricardo da Silva, yeah. Ricky. They play for you know, United with me. Evan Kostopoulos work. They play for everyone else. Play for United as well. Work with me for three years. Mm -hmm. Now he's off a bit, but he might come back soon. I've got other coaches as well, which is very, very good, very capable, very professional. 
and uh, yeah, and then Pembroke as well was really really good experience. It was a short period there, it was yeah. four months. Yeah, it's too far away from me. Yeah, but then I moved into Nazareth now, which I'm doing my. Yeah. My I'm the football coordinator there, yeah. uh, which is I've been there for three and a half years. Great school, they like Pembroke as well, mm. but they yeah like being next door for me. My kids go there, so they offer me a, a better position there. Mm. And then I've been there for three and a half years, so I've been so so happy there. So mm. I want to thank you, uh, Phil, um, Mr. Phil Lewis, which is a principal as well. So beautiful. Um, I, I want to say I think the the thing with Pembroke is that it was um, really the first engagement you ever had with. The idea that you know coaching was the natural progression for me, um, and I just you know it was great seeing you do what you did at Pembroke because for me, um, you know when it comes to junior football and coaching in the youth phase of development, there's more that you bring than what the traditional coach normally does. So as a coach, you're all about more than just teaching kids about the best how to get the best out of playing in a certain position, how to eat well, how to prepare themselves for a big match psychologically. Um, with you, um, I believe what's synonymous with your philosophy is that a professional footballer should be more than just a celebrity. They should be role models. They should always respect their teammates, opposition players, coaches, officials, and supporters. Um, are these the sentiments that um, uh, and the aspects that reflect the type of education that you want to hand down to young players. Thank you. Spot on. Yeah. And I believe not only for football, for life as well. So I believe uh, my sort of coach, my philosophy with my coaches is is leaning as well towards the life. Mm -hmm. So education, uh, the discipline, the, uh, the positive attitude, the respect. So you have to have uh, um, with everyone, not only football, we'd be honest, how many kids will make it out of, you know, mm. in here out of a thousand? It's very rare, it's probably one. Very hard to become a football player. Yeah. So it's not easy as people think. Mm. And I've seen here as well the level of coaching not uh, good enough yeah. for that, unfortunately. Mm. And the kids pay the price because of that. So. My kids, for example, that come to my academy, they have been with me for a long time. They know well about uh, the the foundation of mm. football, plus all these attributes that you that you put in there. To become a football player is a lot more than uh, than, be, than be a good player. It's a lot more than that. Of course, it's a lot of attributes mm. around, and these guys. They're not able to pass this message. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Of course. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And that's what I say. When you play the game, when you respect people, all these things, it's, it counts. It counts. Absolutely. You have to... No questions about that. I'm just going to quickly take you back to April 2015. Um, you got uh, nominated in the team of the decade for the A-League. Um, what an honour it was. Um, suddenly after you had this difficult period with leaving United, uh, now you, you'd found new purpose and you'd been recognised as one of the greatest ever players to play in this country, essentially. Um, suddenly things were picking up for you. Yeah, it's true. I was straight after yeah, uh, I left the club, United, uh, I think it was April, March, mm -hmm. April, the PFA, the FFA contacted me about uh, yeah to go to Sydney, then I yeah, to receive that prize. Mm. And then I was actually, for me, that's the... That's the highest uh, prize you could get as a mm. footballer because you're recognized by your peers. Mm. So you're not recognized by media, by coach, by uh, supporters. You're recognized by the guys that play the game. So that's the best judge you can have. Yeah. So that's for me that that was the best thing. And in 10 years league at the time, uh, I think uh, that was a that was a good thing to lift my 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 morals up as yeah, well yeah. i think that that helped a lot mm. and then yeah i i didn't need it because i never need that i believe what i've done what i do but it's good always good for your ego when you know mm. that people uh recognize you as a as a the best player in the position in, in a as a left back mm. uh, for for the first 10 years of the league so yeah. i was really proud of it as well amazing achievement um so we then get into 2016 where um, late in the year 
The football world was deeply saddened after the tragedy surrounding players from Chapecoense FC. Did I pronounce yeah, that correctly? Yeah, that's right. Um, so uh, the majority of their players died in an air disaster. You then got to play in an all-stars match at the famous Maracanã Stadium um, in front of more than 60,000 people. You were invited to play in the game by the Brazilian legend Zico. Um, tell us about the experience. Yeah, that was great. That was, that was a very good experience. Um, Zico, I know Zico for through for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, Zico, as you all know, is a is a Flamengo yeah, a legend. Yeah. A legend, probably the one of the top mm -hmm. top five Brazilian players ever. Mm -hmm. And he he, I know his kids, his three boys, so good friends of uh, of the, the, the boys, and uh, they they invited me towards the end of the year. 2016 to go because they they're gonna make uh, they, they made a big big uh, big game big event mm. for the to help to get the all the money raising mm -hmm. to give it to the help the families and the club to you know to build up again which is probably well as far as I remember one of the worst tragedies uh, sports tragedy uh, ever uh, really hit me a lot me and myself and a lot of people re really hard new few few boys and uh, that died in the play. Uh, so I was uh, I was happy and honored to be invited. And then oh, I accepted straight away. We went back home, played that game. Uh, being in Maracanã, which is uh, our home ground, and I played for Flamengo. One of the homes of so, the world. Yeah, when I played Flamengo, is a, yeah. a home ground uh, uh, stadium. Mm. So we, I, was, uh, I was happy to be back, play alongside. Uh, play with Neymar mm. and these guys, Zico and all these uh, old players. There it was such a such a pleasure to be involved in the, in an event like yeah. that. Yeah. Do you just want to quickly touch on that that Neymar encounter that you had? There's a great photo that you've got with him. Did he say anything to you that stands out in the memory? Because you obviously got to meet him. <laughs> that was the first time I met him. Um, he, well, I was actually, we didn't stop to talk through mm -hmm. to each other, like, you know, but the, the usual conversation with players and checking yeah. the change room, how are you going as a family? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I remember I got a friend of mine that knows him. He told me once that he, when he told him that he was my friend, and he said, oh, I remember Cassie playing when he played for Flamengo. Yeah, yeah, wow. When I was really yeah. young. Oh, he's a good player, I remember him. Because you can see he was probably 26, 27, mm -hmm. I was 30. Yeah, we talk about 12 years older. Yeah. It was just the time when I when I was playing, 20, 21, and he was uh, he was just young, mm. and he remembers that. That made me made me proud. Yeah. Like, wow, man. Yeah. I remember. I mean, the most idolized player of today. Yeah. Is well, I told my my kids, my kids idolize yeah. Neymar, and mm -hmm. I told them, oh, did you, you want to hear that? Yeah. And I put the audio for them to hear. It. Oh, wow. And then they, they what a moment, it. huh? They love it. They love. Oh, wow, Dad. Brilliant stuff. Brilliant do they know? Do, does he know you? Yeah. As I don't know what he's saying, not sure if it's true or not. Uh, he's saying. That's special, special memories. Um, so we fast forward to 2018. Um, your private academy, Academia de Football by Casio. has seen continual rapid growth since you began the academy. Um, do you want to just quickly tell us how that's all going and uh, for any uh, parents of young players who are watching how they can get in touch with you and, uh, and what you're all about as someone that's looking to bring up the next generation of players in South Australia. This here is, uh, if you want to hold that up for the camera, Cassio, this is, uh, I think, the former playing strip of... Uh, yeah, this is my former, yeah. Inspired uh, by Flamengo. Yes, yeah. that's it. And yeah. in United as well, which yeah. is red. Now we we change it into uh, playing red. Uh, and so we still went black, you still combine both. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so this this is, yeah, this is for you, so you know. Yeah. You can <laughs> hold in your... Yeah, it's in your gallery. Special gift. Thank you. Nah, yeah. So you can hold it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So my academy is yeah is really really good. Something mm. that my that I am really proud of when uh, when I started we won two three kids. Now we got a hundred kids, mm -hmm. and um, we know different group ages of course, and uh, 
we do everything works by by email so mm. my wife Juliana runs the admin yeah so when she's got time <laughs> we'll put the details up yeah and then she and you contact us in the info uh at academy of football by yep. we'll put it all and up, then yep. we and then we what we do now as we full uh we've been full for the last three terms yeah so what we do we place the kids into the waiting list mm -hmm. and then they can we invite them for a trial and then if they're successful and then we place them into the groups that we that, that we got which they all now are very very strong yeah and then so what i'll do is take them to um tournaments overseas mm -hmm. interstate so i just went to spain this year i'm going to caravella which play here yeah caravella yeah, yeah. caravella yeah. caravella's gonna do so second. he's got he's got his own academy he's got his own academy as well yeah. in Cairns, yeah. north yeah. Yeah. uh uh north, queensland yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. North, north queensland. Cairns, i think Cairns, yeah, Cairns. Yeah. and um so i'm going there in april mm -hmm. with my with two i'm going to take two of my teams one mm -hmm. the 10 one the 11s and yeah so if people are interest uh you can contact us and you place uh, we place you guys there and whenever we can we got a chance we, we invite you to beautiful and, and what a fantastic thing it is to see two adelaide united um former players uh headlining academies and and i personally i haven't heard of any academies in south australia that have a waiting list so oh, okay must be uh <laughs> it must be going brilliantly um we do what we can we, yeah. we do the best with the yeah. kids we, we, our, our philosophy is like we said before is all about the kids mm. so we we really want to help them yeah what they don't have yeah so we give them back um of course it's a it's a pay uh, it's a private it's yeah. a paid service yeah. but uh i would love to do just a community service uh, paid by by the government but or you need to eat. by I need yeah exactly we need, <laughs> we need my family needs to I've got three kids yeah. as well so we need to but um but yeah but we yeah. do what we can to help the of kids course. to to move into and to dream mm. what they what they want that's no, brilliant stuff um i just want to i just want to say something quickly um just going back to the Pembroke coaching experience that I had with you in 2015. Um, as a young boy, uh, I remember sitting in the stands at Cooper Stadium. I remember seeing you score that free kick against the victory and then you tucked the ball under your shirt because I think your wife was pregnant. Um, I remember the countless crosses which resulted in crucial goals which came from your left side. I remember the winning free kick you scored against San Freche Hiroshima in the Champions League. Um, I'll never forget that absolute rip snort of a goal that you scored the half volley against the Newcastle Jets. Yeah, I remember. Um, these are all memories of your time at the club that um, I'll forever hold dear and to have had the opportunity to suddenly work alongside you in a professional capacity was a dream come true. Cassio, thank you for the time that you've given us to come on the show. It's been an absolute privilege. You are a true legend, and um, I wish you all the very best in all your future endeavours, whether it's in South Australia or beyond. Thank you very much. Thank Ray. you very much. Yeah, Thank you. Thank Cheers. you very much. Thanks for for all the opportunity here. You gave me to to talk through and explain, but it was brilliant and always good to talk about about Leeds United and the the supporters. All good memories. Mm. Thank you for everything. Thanks for for giving me a chance to talk about through through my academy as well. So thank you very much. It's been an honour, mate. And um, yeah, since since two thousand and seven, it's it's been um, a real privilege to tell your life story, basically. So thank you. Um, yeah, it's been fantastic having you on. And uh, Cassio will be, uh, I'm sure, around more often than uh, you have been in the last four years when it comes to big game occasions at Cooper Stadium. Hopefully, maybe we'll spot you in the crowd. Um, I remember. When the when the camera shone on you in the uh, FA Cup 2018 final celebrations, the crowd just erupted. Um, um, they hadn't seen you, hadn't seen or heard a lot of people, a lot of Reds fans hadn't seen or heard from you, from you in a long time. So um, to get you back out there now with this interview and and all the folks on your academy, um, you know we hope we'll, we'll hear more from you and we we'll see more of you. So thank you. Thanks thank for you. all your service, Cassio, and. Thank you. Um, Thanks, we'll, mate. Thank we'll, you. Appreciate uh, it. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks mate. Thank Cheers. you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye.